Hello and welcome to Carroll 101. My name is Jeff Daggetts. I'm the director for Carroll County Department of Recreation and Parks. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about our department, some of the things that we do, and why we do it. So first, I'd like to start with just who we are. Uh, we have our staff are divided into three main areas. We have our administration, we have our Bureau of Parks, and our Bureau of Recreation. Administration is concerned with the overall operation of the department, as well as the capital budget, and which is building new parks or uh, restoring older parks. Our Bureau of Parks is concerned with running the larger uh, main park operations, such as Piney Run, Hoshua, and the Hatbaker Firearms Facility. And then we have our Bureau of Recreation. This is all the programming areas of the department that is involved with our volunteer recreation councils, as well as our community recreation programs. Those programs are uh, publicized with program guides that come out four times per year. Overall, our staff totals 26 full-time positions. We have a number of part-time and seasonal positions, particularly at locations like Piney Run. And we are supported by the efforts of more than 8,000 volunteer jobs. So in comparison to some neighboring counties, uh, we are a very small department. We have 26 full-time staff. A department like Howard County has 220 full-time staff. So there are significant differences as far as how we do things, and we are very reliant on volunteers. We have a total of 28 county parks. We have almost 4,800 acres of parkland within the county. So that's a lot to keep up with. It's a lot of open space and a lot of different options for residents to enjoy. We have a $2.8 million operating budget. This is money that's used for the general operations of the department. We have revenue that is collected through entrance fees and other charges that totals about $1.5 million every year. And then the volunteer recreation councils are extremely active. They raise money in the community in support of their programs and efforts. That money never comes in through the county, but that money totals about four and a half million dollars a year. So very, very busy operations. So what do we do? Our mission statement is connecting people, parks, and programs in support of a strong, healthy community and natural environment. The big word, the important word there is connecting. We provide a lot of connections for the community. We connect people with each other, with their community, and just giving them plenty of options for public recreation. We provide programs and a variety of benefits, not only to Carroll County residents, but also to visitors as well. Our central office is located in the Robert Moton Center in Westminster. We utilize those 28 county parks. We also utilize 40 public schools, a number of municipal parks, and even some private locations, as well as the county senior and community centers. So why do we do the things that we do in recreation and parks? What benefits do we provide to the community? There's numerous social benefits, educational benefits, uh, health benefits, being active, getting outdoors, just is very good for people, both physically and emotionally. We provide many opportunities for lifelong learning. People take many of our classes because they're either trying to learn a new skill or maybe improve on one that they already have. Uh, many people don't know this, but parks generally support property values. In fact, you may see increases as much as 20% in your property value if your home is located near a park. And basically, this, all of these things help make Carroll County a place where people want to live, and potentially where businesses may want to locate. So we're providing benefits not only to Carroll County residents, but also to visitors. We have a lot of events or facilities that may draw people from outside the county. When they come here, they use our facilities, but they also may be buying gas at gas stations or purchasing food. So it does have an economic impact and helps our business community as well. So how do we do these things? There's, there's a number of different uh, strategies that we have and tactics that we would use to provide these types of programs. 
We have activities that are provided, different programs for the public that they register for. We try to do this based on the needs that they have communicated to us and by the success of programs that have operated. What has worked, you know, what do people want more of, we try to provide that. We offer very special events, which may be a one-time program. Those are things that we may have a larger crowd that participates in and public gets enjoyment out of that. It's something a little out of the ordinary. Sometimes they're based around the holidays or tournaments or other activities. We have our park facilities. Many of these, in fact, most of these are free. They are available for use every day of the year. Uh, people can come in and walk on trails, uh, take children to playgrounds, just enjoy open space. And there's no entrance fee for that. Anybody can do that at any time. The parks are open sunrise to sunset. And then we have our major park facilities, which have a higher level of service. You may have uh, restrooms with flush toilets. You have some other amenities that are there. Those parks are supported with operating budgets, uh, but those parks also have user fees to help uh, provide those extra amenities. We're also very fortunate in Carroll County to have some rather unique facilities. I mentioned earlier about having a public shooting range. that's the only one in the state through a Recreation and Parks Department. We have a 300-acre reservoir down at Pawnee Run. We have a 10-mile water trail on Big Pipe and Little Pipe Creeks. Up at Bear Branch Nature Center, we have both a planetarium and an observatory. We have a couple of dog parks, and we just have some very very unique facilities, even a landing strip for model airplanes. So if there's something that people would like to see, chances are we either offer it already or would be willing to work with them to go ahead and do that. Now our capital budget is very important in trying to create these facilities. It may be building them initially, or once they're there, the items that are at the park, the different amenities, they all have a shelf life. If we put in a playground 15 years later, that playground is going to be worn out. It's going to need to be replaced. It takes money to do that. So with our capital budget, we're focusing not only on new projects and new demands from the public, but also how do we maintain our existing park infrastructure? That is always a challenge because the list of things to do is generally longer than the amount of money to do it with. So we're very dependent on program open space, which is money that comes from the state of Maryland, as well as impact fees and local tax dollars to help support that capital budget. How do we interact with the public? We have a lot of different ways. In fact, we may have more exposure to the public than any other agency, including even the Board of Education, because we're not only working with school-age students. We're working with preschool, school-age students, we have uh, adults, we have senior citizens, we have residents, we have tourists. So it's a very large number of people. We have over 30,000 people in our programs each year. Numerous people visit our park facilities, again, in-county and out-of-county visitors. We have volunteer recreation councils which provide programs. Most of them meet monthly or bi-monthly. Our staff meets with them on a regular basis. We have an appointed advisory board, uh, which is very helpful in terms of giving our staff input and suggestions. What are we doing right? What areas do we have room for improvement? And then we also do periodic needs assessment surveys. In fact, we just completed one, and these are very helpful where people will tell us the different types of programs they want to see or what types of facilities they would like to see the county offer. And if people are looking to find out information about our programs and what's going on, uh, they can sign up for Carroll Connect and they can get emails sent to them whenever there's new updates regarding information in our department. Uh, also, people can check on our website. We are very active on social media and, and that may be one of the best ways to keep up with new activities that are going on. Not only to get information, but then also often we'll have photos posted from events afterwards. Go online, you may, you may see yourself or your family or people you know uh, who've been enjoying some of those activities. We have several projects that are either underway or fairly recent and also some challenges that I'd like to share with you. 
First, some of the capital projects. Deer Park was recently expanded. We purchased about 18 acres a few years back, and we've just finished adding a couple of athletic fields there. We've also increased the amount of parking available, which has been a long need at that site. We also extended the walking trail in that location. Renovations turned out beautifully. Uh, we've had a lot of good feedback from it, and the public is already out there enjoying the new facilities. Westminster Veterans Memorial Park is still under construction. This is located on Crest Lane in Westminster. It is a passive park, has a walking trail, and uh, we'll have a playground and a picnic pavilion located there as well. People are already using the walking trail, but we still are in the process of finishing some of the other amenities. Gillis Falls Trail is located down in the Woodbine community. This is a multi-purpose trail that will connect the Carroll County Equestrian Center with Saltbox Park. Sections of this trail have been in place for years. This is going to improve those sections and also provide a usable connection. And we also recently completed a new kayak launch down at Double Pipe Creek Park in Detour. We have two additional launch sites, one in Union Bridge and one in Middleburg that will add some additional distance to that water trail and provide some easy access for kayaks and also for fishing. We have a couple of new projects or future projects on the horizon. We recently purchased 145 acres north of Tawnytown. This will be the first county park that's west of Littlestown Pike and north of 140. Uh, it's a very large area of the county that has been underserved, so we're excited about some new development coming up there in the future. We also are looking to continue to expand pedestrian access into our parks. The Deer Park expansion did allow for a pedestrian access into the neighboring community. We've also done that in recent years at Cape Horn Park and over at the Westminster Community Pond. And finally, some of the challenges that we faced. Well, the first one obviously at the top of everybody's list in the past year has been COVID. When your mission statement is about connecting people and bringing them together, it's very challenging when you're trying to social distance and stay away from people. So as an agency, we've been challenged by that, but I think our staff has done a very good job being creative with offering different types of programming. Virtual programming, uh, activities that are literally packed into a bag that people can come by and pick up, drive-through events such as a zoo with stuffed animals or visiting Santa, and the list goes on. So it's been a challenging year in that respect, uh, but also very rewarding, and people have been very appreciative of the activities. Some of the other challenges that we have are maintaining our volunteer base. Many people commute to work in this county. When we're relying on volunteers for coaching youth sports and other activities, that's a full day for them. So we're trying to maintain that volunteer base as long as we can because we know we're not in a position to have a department with 220 staff. We have our 26 staff. Uh, we work hard and we work well with our volunteers. And people continue to, to demand different facilities or new facilities. Uh, that's a strain on our capital budget. Uh, a great example of that is uh, the request for turf fields. Many people want them, but that is a very large ticket item. And if we were to do that, it would mean that we didn't do anything else probably for a couple of years. And when we have playgrounds and trails that are wearing out and need to be renovated or replaced, we have to make some difficult choices with that. And last, I'd like to mention that our department was first created in 1971, and with this being 2021, this year is a very special year for us. It's our 50th anniversary. We have a number of activities that uh, will be planned throughout the year. It's been a challenging year to do that with some of the restrictions related to COVID. However, you will continue to see various promotions rolled out throughout the calendar year. And when we think about the number of lives that our department has touched over that 50-year period, uh, activities like outdoor school, which is uh, held up at Hoshua, well over 100,000 students have gone through that program. Some of them have come back and actually become staff working for us. Uh, look at all the youth sports programs and the number of people who go through there. Many of them come back as volunteers. 
Uh, a lot of connections have been made over those 50 years. A lot of good things have come out of that. And we're very excited about the next 50 years as well. And very proud to be a part of that. And finally, if I didn't cover it today, and I'm sure there's things that uh, I didn't cover or people have questions, uh, by all means, come visit us online. Uh, we have a lot of information available on our website at ccrecpark.org. If you have specific questions that you would like to address to us, you can address them to ccrec at carrollcountymd.gov. And again, please follow us on social media. We're very active there. Great way to get new information, and you can always ask questions there as well. And if you would like to call us, our main number at the office is 410-386-2103. And with that, I thank you. I hope you've learned something today about us, and we look forward to hearing from you, or better yet, seeing you in our parks. Thank you, and have a great day.